Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. Um, this is episode number 883. I do keep track. And the topic today is, um, <laughs> it's kind of a retail thing, but I'll get to more detail after that. But basically, Halloween's over, We're getting ready for the holidays now. And I was just thinking back to when I spent some time at Costco a few years ago with decorations. But I'll explain more about that and what you might want to be aware of and what you can do about it in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself and we'll get to it. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. Um, I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I highly recommend it. I'll put a link in the, back, in the comments at the back end so you can get a copy yourself. I'm biased, of course. Um, I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that passion is what drives my work. It's also what started these talks almost three years ago now called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 883. And we're going to have some fun today. Um, again, the topic is Halloween's over. That was last night in case you're tracking days and when this broadcast happened. This is Friday. Happy Friday, by the way. Um, Halloween's over. Are you ready for the holidays? And then after that, put family, stress, etc. I have some solutions for you. So what started this mindset is people have been posting pictures about Christmas decorations being up before Halloween had happened. And I spent some time back in 2013, yeah, I think it's 2013, um, doing some road shows at Costco. It's one of my, I've had plenty of careers, and that was one of my little uh, exp expositions was to go do road shows at Costco stores. So I got to cover 12, I think, Costco stores over the period of three months, four months, something like that. Anyway, it was actually quite a wonderful experience and I'm a big fan of Costco before and a better one now because of that. But what I noticed was, this was, I was in Denver at the time, this was August. It was the end of August and they had up in the, um, in the middle of the store, I'd say the location where it was, they had Halloween costumes and Christmas decorations side by side and Thanksgiving was in there as well. This is the end of August, by the way. So they had Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, minimally, and then Christmas decorations. And they had tons of, I got pictures from there. It was hysterical how much was there. And it was kind of this thing about conflating these events together. And but what I'm aware of though, is that we as human beings, just to shift gears from retail to personal, that have a way of putting the next thing out in front. Maybe that's just me. I don't know, I think all, I think well, certainly men do this. We set up the next goal, the next focus, the next, next thing we're aiming for. But I think women do this too. I could be wrong, so you can let me know in the comments if that's true or not for you. But basically, now Thanksgiving is over, especially if you're a parent, this might be even more true. So now it's preparing for the next event, the next special gathering. And if it's not, there's no birthdays or weddings in between now and Thanksgiving, the next thing you're focusing on is Thanksgiving. And if you're not in America, the next thing after that is Christmas. So my point was, what do you do after Thanksgiving in preparation for that? Now, I'm not talking about decorations and costumes and food and everything else. I'm speaking about how do you prepare yourself emotionally and mentally for those events. Because if you're somebody who goes home for the holidays, and I'll talk about more about this directly around Thanksgiving, but I'm planting seeds now just to prepare you. For many people, if you're in America, Thanksgiving, and if you're outside America, it's Christmas because they have the same energy of going home and seeing family usually. We as human beings tend to carry subconsciously below the surface concerns, upsets, hurt feelings about things that we don't even remember. This is going to make sense in a moment, I trust. <laughs> so you spend your time preparing for Thanksgiving and you've basically got the joy of the meal coming up and thinking about getting it together, but part of you start to have doubt, worry, and maybe even fear about what's coming up. Now, I'm talking about America specifically, but this applies again if you're not in America, it's Christmas, so label your own event. Going home for Thanksgiving is one of those challenging times for a lot of people where you're going to see family again. And if you're someone who's been independent for a long time, going to see family can be a challenging experience. Whether you're in a relationship or not in a relationship, this can be very impactful because of all the family dynamics that have been sitting there waiting for you to come home to them. Oh joy. There's a quote from, I believe it was John Bradshaw, but maybe someone else had quoted this, but said something about, or it may have been a Ram Dass quote, Either way, it was, it, the quote was based on the principle was, you think you're enlightened, go home for Thanksgiving. Because when you go home for Thanksgiving, and I can't speak personally because I'm, I'm English, so I don't have the family thing on Thanksgiving over here, but I do go to Thanksgiving gatherings of the orphans, another topic entirely. 
But going home for Thanksgiving can be the most challenging time of the year because all your childhood stuff comes up, I'll put it that way, when you go home for Thanksgiving. And on top of that, when you're going home, and especially if you're single, there's pressure from the family, maybe the grandparents, the parents, the uncles, the aunts, like why you're not in a relationship or why you're not married if you haven't been married before or why you're not married again if you just got out of marriage. Plus there's the other stuff that comes up with sibling rivalries and family dynamics and you may start remembering them when you get home, even if you're 40, 50 years old, with your parents, what you felt like as a child with them. So lots of stuff can come up to challenge your centered peacefulness, your centered being, that's your ability to be calm. You may find yourself being reactionary when you go home. You might be even be feeling trepidation now as I'm talking about it, even though it's still three, four weeks away, five weeks away, four weeks away, four weeks away. <laughs> I just remember what day this is. Now, if it's Christmas, you've got another month's grace, but it may still be the same thing if you're going home, going home to see family. So what I want to suggest to you, one is if this is true for you, stay tuned because there's some ideas and suggestions, and also I might have an offer at the back end. We'll see where I'm standing with it. But what, I, what I'm aware of is that we tend to not do anything about what happened from the last Thanksgiving. Maybe last Thanksgiving you left there and just tuned out the whole thing. So you come to this Thanksgiving unaware of what happened right then because you blocked it out. Then again, if you're like most people, you remember those Thanksgivings painfully so, and you're not sure what to do with them. So I'm going to offer you some suggestions. Now, sidebar, or yeah, sidebar. You may have a perfectly wonderful experience of Thanksgiving, and you want to perpetuate that, in which case this talk may not be, may not be re relevant to you, just to be transparent. But for most people, there's stuff, stuff, that's like emotional, mental stuff. I want to say baggage is one term, but just dis, um, discomfort is another way of putting it, about going home to your family again. I'm seeing if I'm just checking something. I know for me, going home to see family, my dad in particular, because I want to go back and see him soon. He's in a nursing home now and he's 93. And frankly, I'm a lot better at going there now than I used to be. I've done a lot of work around that because I, I would always have a certain, it wasn't fear, but it was, an infer it was it, uh, inferiority is the word. <laughs> okay, watch me expose myself in live camera. <laughs> I was aware when I used to go see my parents, especially when I was younger, about this sense of inferiority, inferi inferiority around my dad. It was a whole bunch of stuff that came up. And that was any time I went home. Wasn't, I didn't usually go home on the holidays, but I went home other times of the year. So I'm relevant. I'm very present to the fact of how it feels to go back to see family when it's dysfunctional or challenging or upsetting for some reason. Now, I'm using Thanksgiving as a marker or the holidays as a marker because that's the time that most people go back to see family more often than any other time. So here's some things to think about. First of all, you might be telling yourself a bunch of lies. Yes, I'm saying it that way. I know I was telling myself a lot of lies about how my family dynamic was, about who I was, about my dad and other things that simply weren't true, but I made up stuff because of the way I was raised and the environment I was raised in. You may have done the same thing. While you carry a lot of choices or beliefs that aren't true because you haven't confronted them you still look through the lens of a very young person. When you go home to see your, pa your parents, it's like you imagine, imagine sitting around, here's an, an image, you're home for Thanksgiving, you sit around the dining table, and you're sitting at the table, you're imagining yourself getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Your, your, head, your, your, eye, your, your view from your eyes is, is lowering, your feet are getting shorter, you're getting off the floor, you're getting more compact, because in some ways you go for Thanksgiving, instead of you, the adult being there, it's a two-year-old or a five-year-old or a seven-year-old sitting at the table. Now, 30, 40 years may have gone past, but that's still who's sitting at the table with your parents and your family. That can be very uncomfortable. It can be very challenging too because you're sitting at the family table. Hey, Laura, nice to see you. You're sitting at the family table as an adult but feeling like you're a seven-year-old because that's the part of you that showed up because the memories just trigger you back into that place again. And again, if you didn't have a wonderful time with your parents growing up, it's going to come back to haunt you. So what I'm suggesting, well, I haven't got the suggestion, I'm just explaining the pain and the suffering. Um, and this is the challenge, is that we face this experience of going home for the family dynamics, for the family dynamics, <laughs> I was going to say the family Olympics, <laughs> the family dynamics at the holidays, and we're not prepared for it. 
So I'm going to offer you some tips and some guidance for preparation. And offer a, I'm, going to, I'm going to mention something I'm talking about or preparing because Laura actually helped me with this, naming-wise, to give you something to work with. So first of all, and it sounds, it's going to sound, sound simple, simple. Remember you're an adult. <laughs> it sounds so simplistic to say it that way, but it's the thing we don't always remember when we go and see family, especially our parents, that we actually grown up. We still think we're about 10. And it's not even a conscious thing. And that's what the challenge is, is we're not thinking about this. We're just in a level below that. I would use the term subconscious, feeling that we're not that old. And that's an, that's an illusion. That's a false fact. <laughs> I was going to say fake news, but that's a whole lot. I'm not going to go down that path. So the recognition is, when you go home and see your family at Thanksgiving or Christmas, wherever, whichever one or both it is, remember you're an adult. Remember you've made choices. Remember you own your space. And remember your parents are no longer working with a three-year-old or a four-year-old or a seven-year-old. Now, that piece alone could change everything. Not what's easy to do because it's so ingrained with your parental relationship, especially if you left in your 20s, your only experience with your parents full on was when you were younger than that. So that's the imprinting or the behavior you all tend to re, um, resort to as a natural being because it's the way we do things. That's, that's the human psyche. We do that. So my first one invitation is, again, remember you're an adult. Secondly, if you haven't yet forgiven yourself, yes, forgiven yourself for how you were when you were a child around your parents and or forgiven the way you were, the way you judged your parents when you were younger or the way your parents treated you when you were younger, all three of those things, this is a good time to do it now before you go home. Make peace with your past. Make peace with your family. Make peace with your parents. And make peace with yourself. That's easier said than done, I know. I've done quite a bit of work on that myself, and I, and I know a lot of my clients have and friends have too, because it's important to have that place of healing inside so you can be at peace. Again, your peaceful centeredness is at stake here when you go home to your family. So doing the inner work, first of all, remembering you're an adult, two, making peace with your past so you can move into the present with them are two big steps. Another piece of the puzzle also is, is and this is going to be the hard one, I know. To quote Eleanor Roosevelt, one of, her favorite, one of the famous quotes that one of my favorites is, what do you think of me is none of my business. Meaning that when you go home to see your family, they may be saying things about you, talking to you, judging you, commenting to you, that are all about their perception of you. Nothing to do with you. I hope you get this point. This is, this is a big one, by the way. Because this is, this is the key to life itself, is when you're not attached to other people's opinion of you, especially your parents, is when you can be free. And in my work with my clients with relationship coaching, especially, this is one of those pivotal points because we're so tied into other people's approval and parents especially. So I'm going to give you these sample teachings, excuse me, sample um, keys to get to know this because frankly, if you don't get at least these three points, going home can be challenging. This is part of actually what I'm creating. Uh, I was talking to my friend Laura earlier today, uh, my buddy, because um, I was looking at how I, I want to put together a group coaching thing for the next two months over the holidays because this is a challenging time for people. That's why I'm talking about it now because it's been on my mind all day. And the working title right now is, is Thriving Through the Holidays. So again, Thriving Through the Holidays because frankly, the holidays can be a challenging time. It can be nice to go get the presents for yourself and treat yourself nice and everything else, but if you don't thrive when you're around those people, it can be a very challenging place to be. So my um, encouragement is to learn how to thrive through the holidays. So again, remember, remember you're an adult. Make peace with your past, but hear what's going on. And be aware of what they're saying about you is none of your business. Now, those sound, these are very simple. I'm giving you just the, the, the Cliff Notes version because it's a lot deeper than that. So yeah, it's easily done, no problem. But if this is something you want to get clear about, I want to help you through the holidays. And frankly, this is going to be I'm planning on launching this in the middle of November through to the middle of January. So it takes you through the, all the holidays, including New Year's Eve. And if you've got challenges about relationships around New Year's Eve, about who you're going to kiss, you want to be in this course as well. I'm going to cover all of this over the next two months, including adulthood, including making peace with your past, and including clear, clarifying that what other people say has nothing to do with you. That's three components. There's more to it than that. But I understand if this is a place that is concerning to you and I want to reach out and support you. So I'm going to put some links in the comments for you to check on. I don't have a link for the course yet, but if this appeals to you or it's triggering for you, <laughs> either way, message me and I'll let you know how to find out more about it. I don't have a link for it yet, so you can send, you just send me a message over social media or put a comment below in the comments. I'll, I'll reach out to you. 
Um, but I will put some links in the comments. I will put a link in the comments to my books. I mentioned that. I'll also put a link in the comments for my self-love practice because this is the most important time of year to practice loving yourself because sometimes it's so much stuff coming from the outside. And again, the challenging of your parents and that stuff coming at you, the more you love yourself, the less that's going to impact you. So if my self-love meditation, guided meditation, audio and, vi audio and written will be at your service. I'll put that in the comments as well. Um, and I'll put a link to have a chat with me because if this is stirring up stuff for you, it's a good time to act. So I'll put a link in the comments for a conversation with me because if you want help, you want clarity, especially around relationship with anybody, including direct family dynamics and romantic ones, this is a good time to resolve it. So I think I've made my point. Families are coming. Sorry, families. Holidays are coming. Family is going to be about. How are you going to be around it? Are you going to be free? Or are you going to go through the same old thing again and again? I recommend freedom. I hope you do too. And if you want to get some more help, reach out to me. Again, three, three links in the comments and then comment or message me over social media if you want to get help, get interested in this course that I'm offering starting, it's going to be 15th of November, I think. I'll go check what day of the week that is. But it's going to be a two-month immersion in self-support, self-care, and thriving through the holidays. With that, I thank you for watching. Uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> you haven't seen my replays. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily broadcast on my personal page on Facebook. Um, Facebook Live is what I do first. And you can join me live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page. Um, and if you want to join in live, that's much more fun. The replays you can find on my business page on Facebook, which is uh, barryselby.author. You can watch, like my page and watch them all there. Or, excuse me, you can watch most of them there. A bunch of them are not there because Facebook doesn't keep them all there for some reason. But I have backed them up for safekeeping onto my computer and now put them onto my YouTube channel. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, uh, in fact, youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and there's a playlist called Messages for the Masculine. You can watch all my broadcasts. That should keep you busy. If you want help, reach out to me. If you've got any thoughts about this topic, please put them below. I will spawn when I sign off and take advantage of the links I'm putting out there. My offering, my invitations will help you get where you want to go. They'll help you be more joyful and more fulfilled and more at peace through the holidays. This will help you. So thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. I appreciate you being here as well. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.